Esteemed audience and guests, please take your seats as today's performance is about to begin. Thank you and happy watching. The night sky, the stars are twinkling. One shoots down, manipulated to spell out Norva the Noted's final revenge, and we pan down to below it, where a woman on a stage sits with a book, fixes her glasses, and says, Once upon a time, in a world not like our own, seconds before his death, a fiery wizard was cursed by a devoted bard, and as her and her friends lay sleeping, none of them had any idea of what awaited them. The fiery half-elf, scared of what's to come. The runaway cleric, scared of not being needed. The free rogue, trying to wash away the guilt. And the free-spirited waitress, going where the wind takes her. And today, they are our cast. The stage has been set, the actors unprepared. May we present Norva the Notice final revenge. Hi, I'm Princess Justin Flies Away, and I was asked to explain how I pulled off a Dungeons and Dragons musical episode. Heavily inspired by Buffy the Vampire Slayer, once more with feeling, I put together a musical episode for my own players, which went down beautifully. And here's how you can do. Preparation. Whether subtly asked or not, have your players send you a playlist of songs that relate to their character, their relationships, and scenarios they've been through in the past. Sort through these songs and put them into main plot and scenarios that could happen. For example, my main plot had moments of prologue slash opening narration, first song, the whole city is singing, figuring out what's happening, NPC karaoke song, player karaoke songs, uh, call to the big big evil guy, battle songs, reveal of the big big evil guy, revealing deepest darkest secrets, aftermath, end credits and after credits. While scenarios that could have happened, we had dream sequences of what ifs, foreshadowing or nightmares, reflection on their past, families, homes, attraction, first kiss, getting together, examining the relationships, woohoo moments, how the party is seen by other people, arguments, makeup, praying to their gods, we had some positivity and negativity, stress, learning to relax, fight training, opening up, confessing feelings, romantic, friendly and truthful, cheering up, anger, protest, celebration, drama, drunken songs, death saving throws, and continuing the fight, as all can be seen on screen now. Number two, secrets. Ask your players if you haven't already for their deepest, darkest secrets. This is what will be revealed to the party later on in the episode. As I was heavily inspired by Buffy the Vampire Slayer's musical episode, I really used that episode to dive board in what I wanted my main plot to be about, which was secrets, telling your truth, and the aftermath of the reveal of secrets. So even after the musical episode, my players and characters were still thinking about what was revealed and what they were going to do with their relationships and themselves going forward. That's how you keep your musical episode thought-revoking and memorable, but also light and fun. Set up. Curse your party. The following example of how I curse my party is taken from D&D Speak and Tweaked a Little. It also features gruesome and animal death subject matter, so if you don't want to hear any of that, please skip to this time frame to avoid it. I sent my party on a quest to rid the city sewers of oozes and slimes that previous adventurers had gone to defeat and not yet come back. I also gave Hint and a child NPC who said a lot of pets had been going missing in the area and that their pet was last seen by the sewers. With every ooze and slime that they took down, they kept hearing a voice that said, Leave! <laughs> and got more and more angry, threatening, and desperate as they reached his hiding place. Discovering the mysterious voice hiding spot, they discovered an evil bard's hidden lair where he'd been stealing pets and turning them into instruments, including some of the past adventurers. And not allowing the party to leave, he demanded a fight and lost, but just before he did, he cursed the party. Now my players destroyed the bard with fire, including all the setup and hints that I left in his lair, but if they hadn't, they would have discovered that this bard worshipped a sort of musical demon and was planning to give these instruments as a gift to them. Foreshadowing. But they didn't, they carried on the session with normal, and I struck them with the musical episode as soon as they woke up, which I highly recommend. Setting up music. As I DM on Skype, I use the website JQBX, but you might find another website you like, or, you know, be able to perform face to face, you lucky sod. Either way, shock your friends in the morning with a theatrical performance, or make them do the theatrical performance in a dream sequence or morning montage. Just have fun. Musical episode mechanics. Number one when to sing. After the initial shock of the opening sequence, your party will believe that the musical episode is a curse inflicted on just them. It isn't. If you're anything like me, it's affected the whole city, but they're unaware of when they're next going to sing. I recommend it every time a character gets emotional, it's a perfect opportunity for a scenario song or simply plot development. Each time this song should hint towards the character's feelings of themselves or a different character or their deepest, darkest secret. Play the song that incredibly reads them to filth and ask them to roll a constitution saving throw needing to beat 13. If they don't, simply write a tiny mark and save it for the finale. 
I rewarded my players 10 XP every time they took part in a song as it really pushed them to improv, get silly and just have fun with it. Through researching what this curse could possibly be, introduced Cacophony, the musical demon. They're dramatic, they crave entertainment, and they curse people to sing for them with their fiery magic, leading some of their victims to become Uncle Owen and Aunt Brew if they don't go their way. Now I put Cacophony the musical in the same place as the evil hidden bard, which my players went to a lot earlier than I anticipated. So don't be afraid to say, it's not the right time, act three hasn't begun come back later. For example, I used a singing ghost lady to draw them back into exactly where I needed them to be just a little bit later. When discovered, Kogafi the Musical will greet the cast of today's play and reveal that the person who Ahem. themselves basically did it to troll the whole city, embarrass the party, and just give Cacophony a few souls. And then, there were revealed two more things. First, were all the constitution saving rolls have been four, so every failure to beat 13 has led to someone's passing on, aka all the victims they've seen throughout the day. And if your party is as morally good as mine and they found out that all these passing ons has resulted from their rolls, they will want a fight. And if they aren't, Embarrassing them through song is enough for one. Which brings me to the second reveal. Cacophony the Musical is a musical demon. Music to reveal what characters are really thinking. Their hopes, their dreams, their deepest, darkest secrets. When your party tries to fight Cacophony the Musical, it's up to you if they defeat them or not. Have them be unable to not say their deepest, darkest secret. Now, I made it unescapable, but you can make it a role if you'd like to. And then the reveal of these deepest, darkest secret as the party find out more and more about each other, whether they want to or not, because they are forced to say it. The juicy tension. Number three, the curse and the aftermath. Personally, I used the reveal to let Cacophony get away, but it's up to you if you want your party to defeat them or not. I personally use Cacophony as a showman who hides behind their tricks and their musicals and their goons to do the real dirty work, and then after the reveal, gets bored and just goes home. But it's completely up to you, I still made a character sheet for them. Finally, the curse lasts for 24 hours, so the next morning your party and the city is free from Cacophony the Musical, but no one can forget how yesterday changed their lives and how flipping awesome your session was. In the aftermath, my players had a lot of heavy role-playing conversations which led to character development, bigger art, and relationship development. My city kind of split two and two. Some of the bards were writing the awesome lyrics they heard yesterday and made their own version of the popular songs they heard yesterday, but different, and other half of the city was starting to be terrified of music, which which could lead to a very cool Footloose sequel. Either way, it was very fun and led to one of my best sessions as a DM. My name is Princess Jasmine Flies Away, and if you're wondering what my credentials in D&D is, shifting into Star Wars, Wizarding World 2.0, and Barbie Mamedia the campaign. Thank you so much.